so today what we will do is uh, try to actually make a mathematically rigorous analysis of the laminar premix flame problem what we have been doing so far is a somewhat like a phenomenological construction of uh, energy balance and mass balance uh, uh, looking at the preheat zone and the reaction zone separately in fact we went all the way up to even considering um, not only upstream diffusion of products and consequently a downstream reduction of reactant species concentration relative to the up, far upstream reactant concentration uh, we also uh, taken took in account the effect of um, non unity Lewis number of uh, the, rea the, the reactants in, in uh, trying to find out how the reactant concentration profiles are going to change because of that but however when you are now doing the rigorous analysis we start with the uh, schwab zeldovich formulation which means um, we, we have to go along with the 11 assumptions that, uh, that are attendant uh, to the schwab zeldovich formulation and then uh, we, we make further assumptions uh, hopefully only a few uh, that is particular to this, to this problem so further assumptions the first thing that we make is a somewhat a peculiar simplifying assumption uh, which could be relaxed uh, number of moles does not vary does not vary uh, during during the reaction um, so let us suppose that uh, uh, we, we have uh, N A equals N B equals N and uh, this this corresponds to saying so for example for a uh, uh, I should not say N or uh, for a uh, for, for a let us say nth order or should say maybe we, we just go with N, N for nth order uh, rearrangement reaction such as like let us say N A equals N B uh, B uh, when you now say N A equal to N B then this this actually implies that W A equal to W B so what basically happens is your uh, mass fractions and mole fractions are equal um, so you do not have to worry about a further as a, a further equation that relates to mass fractions and mole, mole fractions second is a um, we assume a calorically perfect gas now uh, notice that uh, we did not make this assumption as part of the schwab zeldovich formulation we could still deal with a integral t reference to t cpt uh, cpdt uh, in the case of uh, uh, schwab zeldovich in general that means you could assume a temperature varying um, specific heat but here we make a uh, uh, calorically perfect gas assumption that is uh, Cp equal to constant also essentially we are saying all thermal properties are constant uh, K is a constant. So let us assume that the um, thermal conductivity is a constant as well number 3 uh, flame is uh, one dimensional and planar uh, and, and steady of course uh, steady state is assumed in the schwab zeldovich uh, but just to want to point out here that we are looking at a steady flame which is one dimensional and planar that is assumption which is not very unrealistic if you think about uh, for example if you had a slotted Bunsen burner you could actually have a conical flame and locally along the side of the cone or since a conical like a tent shaped flame 
and uh, locally along the side of the tent like the shoulder of the flame is reasonably planar of course it does not look one dimensional but we will uh, notice later on that we should be able to actually take a component of the flow perpendicular to the flame and then treat uh, the flow field across the flame locally like the way we are doing here. So that this is this is a very reasonable assumption the other ones are obviously simplifying assumptions. Uh, so let us now proceed with uh, uh, how we would do the schwab zeldovich So the schwab zeldovich energy equation um, goes like take a divergence of uh, rho v vector integral t superscript not to t cp dt minus rho d gradient integral t superscript not t to t cp dt equal to minus uh, sigma i equals 1 to n delta h f i not w i is what we had uh, we denote um, negative sigma i equals 1 to n delta h f i not w i as let us say w q all right uh, now that is kind of like a summation is equal to like reaction rate times the uh, heat of reaction uh, of course we are assuming a single step reaction as part of the schwab zeldovich formulation um, of course this was not the final energy equation that we derived in the schwab zeldovich so this, this is what we had actually termed as the schwab zeldovich energy equation while we, do, while we were doing the formulation so it is basically taken right from there um, we have not formed the coupling terms or uh, the alphas and all those things at this stage uh, but let us suppose that we can just proceed from here and then apply the one dimensional um, apply this to one dimensional situation then here we can now write this as rho u d by dx of uh, cp t minus t naught minus rho d d squared over dx squared cp t minus t naught equal to wq okay uh, we essentially uh, the uh, divergence has become like a d by dx and uh, for a one dimensional flow we know that rho u is a constant therefore we can actually pull this out because, because rho u is a constant we have together uh, as a product we can pull that out of the uh, derivative and uh, then we evaluate the integral for a constant cp and we also do the same thing uh, over here and since it is one dimensional we can write it as a ordinary de derivative instead of a partial derivative uh, because things are varying only along, along x which is which is in this direction across the flame okay uh, then we write the schwab zeldovich uh, species equation for species a that is let us say that is the reactant there and uh, so we, do, we now write uh, for this species now what you will find when you now try to apply the schwab zeldovich formulation is we do not necessarily solve the entire n plus 1 equations that we talked about where n is the total number of uh, species involved okay although it would look like uh, they were all coupled and we have to solve them simultaneously and so on what we are actually looking for is for, for equations to look identical so if equations begin to look identical then it is sufficient for us to solve one of the equations that are uh, that is uh, a part of the identical set instead of having to solve for all the equations simultaneously. Uh, so this is how we simplify our lives um, instead of actually burdening ourselves with lots of equations to solve. Uh, so here uh, in the case of uh, um, the premix flame we will see that uh, for the moment it is actually sufficient for us to uh, take the species uh, A conservation alone we do not have to worry about lots of other species. Uh, so here you have a divergence of uh, 
rho v y a minus rho d gradient y a equal to w a. Now since you have uh, same number of uh, moles everywhere we can we can point out that uh, w a equal to minus w b equal to minus w right. So w b is the rate of production of b w a is the rate of depletion of a and uh, so rate of depletion of a should should have a negative sign to denote the depletion if you are now writing it in terms of uh, the general reaction rate w uh, on, on a mass basis. Uh, so here if you now try to unwrap the divergence and vector notation and so on uh, fortunately we do not have an integral to evaluate in this case as in the energy. Uh, so it should simplify as d by dx of y a minus rho d um, d squared y a over d x squared uh, equals minus w as a matter of fact I should point out that we are also assuming the rho d to be constant by the way um, uh, that that is that is not that is sort of uh, implicitly stated here because we are assuming um, d to be a constant um, and uh, uh, th th this is like an incompressible flow where the mixture density does not change so therefore uh, and then of course we are not even bothering about uh, the mixture density uh, uh, changing with temperature all right therefore uh, we would actually suggest that rho d is a constant and we can go through with the divergence all the way to the uh, applying the gradient and therefore you get the second derivative uh, here all right. Now we want to actually try to see if uh, these two equations are looking alike in, in some way and this, this is what we also tried to do when we did the schwab zeldovich formulation anyway right. So uh, here if you denote uh, denote theta equal to Cp T minus T naught divided by Q and uh, alpha equals 1 minus y a this is pretty interesting actually because uh, well this, this is kind of obvious we want to get the q down here um, so we want to get the q down here okay um, and then you have essentially t is the one that is varying cp is a constant t naught is a constant but you have this t with all this paraphernalia like cp times t minus t naught uh, uh, together and then okay so we want to now say that is like the variable now instead of the actual variable temperature and uh, then we get this q down here so that it will also have a w just there on the right hand side just as well as the species equation but the species equation has a negative sign with for the w therefore if you want to have only a w there all, all you need to do is to actually multiply this by a negative sign on the on the left hand side that means we should have actually been saying alpha is equal to minus y a not 1 minus y a so why were why were we looking at 1 minus y a this is a trick okay that that uh, is not really highlighted in textbooks and so on what we are basically looking for is something physical look at how we actually proceeded in the phenomenological development of the structure of the premix flame that was the key we we noticed that the temperature profile goes like this and then we started asking questions about how would the product profile look like right and then we came to the conclusion that if the pro if most of the products are actually produced here we should expect anticipate that the product concentrations should actually grow only over here but once the products are actually formed they kind of look around and see hey I am actually a lot over here and I am getting convected down there so I am also there the only place that I am not here not, not around is here therefore can I diffuse but I am getting convected down so there is like a balance of how much upstream diffusion the products can do versus the downstream convection that they experience and that would actually give rise to a, a, a concentration profile that becomes pretty much identical to the temperature profile um, in the in the event of a Lewis number equal to 1 which is assumed in the schwab zeldovich formulation right. So uh, then we realize that the product, spe the, the product species also goes through a convective diffusive balance in what we thought was the preheat zone uh, for only the thermal balance earlier 
and so we anticipate that the product concentrations should look pretty much like the temperature concentrations if you normalized in certain ways right so how would you normalize like this looks like a normalized temperature in some sense not exactly t to the superscript naught which is the standard temperature we should have actually put t to the subscript naught for the initial temperature then this would have looked like a normalized temperature and I will come to that pretty soon but this one instead of just saying alpha is equal to minus y a which which would have done the job for us here to actually make this look similar to that with with t replaced by theta through this transformation we are actually saying 1 minus y a because alpha now begins to actually act like the product species constant concentration right so it is essentially saying whatever so if I had only two react two two species let us say okay a and b and then you can clearly see that y y b would be like 1 minus y a right if you had multiple species it didn't matter finally you are going to actually have something that the out of which you are subtracting y a so 1 minus y a will do the trick for you to actually have alpha go more like the product you see so that is that is essentially the idea here so we are actually looking for the equations to look similar by choosing a um, if you want to call it a transformation by choosing a transformation for the species uh, reactant species concentration that will mimic the product variation because that is how we actually develop the uh, the uh, phenomenological understanding on how upstream product diffusion um, causes a downstream reactant uh, depletion through, through diffusion. So yes. The pressure remains constant in the Uh huh. And we have taken rho to be constant. Uh huh. So all this temperature. Yes. So that that that's a uh, that that the, the effect of that is going to be felt in the flow. Okay. So what will happen is if you if you really have a temperature sorry density that depends depends on uh, temperature then your mass balance is going to get affected so your when you say that rho u is equally a constant if the rho changes with temperature your u is going to accelerate right that is something that we noticed in the rankine hugonio formulation that across the deflagration the flow accelerates right so 1 over rho u increases so rho decreases and therefore t should increase anyway and then u will also increase all that stuff is correct but in the in the in the in the schwab zeldovich formulation we are actually adopting a given flow field and the given flow field here is a uniform flow field that means no matter what the constitute constituents of the mixture are or what is the composition of the mixture is as we go from the reactants to the products through the flame the mixture as a whole is having only the same velocity we are ignoring the fact that the flow is going to accelerate it is as if like we are not interested in it we are not worried about it okay for correspondingly then we can actually go with a, a, a constant density situation or we do not explicitly state that we say rho d is a constant and then you start thinking about why should d vary with rho in a way that rho d is constant and so on that is that is not exactly the way it should it is justified okay. So the way it is justified is we are basically thinking about like an incompressible mixture and we are uh, violating the uh, uh, the, the, the gas law the perfect gas law but that violation is more felt downstream of the flame when our business is over so we do not we do not worry about it okay. So uh, this is something that I pointed out that right at the beginning when we are doing the shop shop Zalovich or, or when we actually did the um, one dimensional momentum to show that it will it will reduce to something like pressure is approximately equally a constant the point there being um, if you want to take into account the velocity variation uh, in the flow then then only then you have to worry about the density variation with respect to temperature and then the flow problem and the combustion problem will get coupled here we are actually looking at a combustion problem that is decoupled from the flow problem for which we have to make this assumption okay. So if you now go back and plug theta and alpha in the energy and the species equations respectively you now get equations that look like rho d d square theta divided by dx square minus rho u d theta over dx plus 
w equal to 0 and uh, rho d d squared alpha divided by dx squared minus rho u d alpha over dx plus w equal to 0. Hey those two equations look exactly the same except that one of them has a theta the other one has an alpha to solve for right. Now if you are Greek you might have a preference of theta over alpha but I am not so I am not going to really worry about which equation I am going to solve is that okay is it okay to say now it is sufficient for us to solve only one equation I do not have to solve both the equations or what is the catch would, would theta and alpha look exactly the same as you solve for one and, and then expect uh, the other one to behave exactly the same is that okay fine whenever you are confronted with two differential equations that look identical except for the 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 the, uh, the symbol that is used for the independent variable also the dependent variable I am sorry or as a matter of fact okay variables <laughs> okay. So are the two equations going to actually give the same result or what are we what are we missing there is one more thing that we have to worry about. All differential equations have the burden of having to satisfy boundary conditions okay. So at this stage we can say that theta is going to be related to alpha if it is it and it is sufficient for me to solve one equation and get uh, and, and then satisfy its boundary conditions and obtain one of them let us say theta then I should be able to say that theta is equal to a alpha plus b all right and why would I say a alpha plus b because I am expecting to have two boundary conditions for alpha as well with which I can actually evaluate a and b instead of having to freshly solve this equation for alpha and then apply its boundary condition. So that would actually give me room for applying boundary conditions for alpha or before we proceed in that direction we are we are probably better off looking at what are the boundary conditions for theta and alpha and see if they are also identical right if, if they are identical then what do we say <laughs> right so let us see and, we, and, and it, it is not it is not terribly uh, unrealistic to expect them to have nearly identical boundary conditions because as I said this is mimicking the product. And in the in the and in, in the case of low unity Lewis number, we expect that these profiles should be the same, right? If these things have been normalized right, all right. So uh, hold your breath, okay? Uh, hold on to your seats. We are going to have some fun here, right? So uh, let's look at the boundary conditions. Cold boundary. that is x equals minus infinity alpha is equal to 0 theta equal to 0 uh, assuming supposing t superscript naught uh, as t naught without loss of generality because I could have actually written this as t minus t subscript not minus um, my, minus of uh, sorry t t minus subscript t subscript not plus t subscript not minus two superscript not. So I could have I could have added and subtracted my uh, uh, actual temperature initially. That's essentially saying. I have a sensible enthalpy initially uh, above the uh, reference uh, value for the for the reactants that is now going to be added up over here which is a constant and therefore it is not going to really affect me at all. So I could actually say that um, effectively <coughs> T is whatever it is and then I and then, and then say theta is equal to 0 and alpha uh, is also equal to 0 because I am assuming that I am going to have all of them as reactants 
uh, upstream and then alpha uh, y a should be equal to 1 and the uh, hot boundary x equals plus infinity right now theta will now you give you cp tf minus t naught divided by q and uh, alpha should be equal to y a goes to 0 all the reactants are getting consumed in the flame and therefore you are going to get alpha to be equal to 1 but what is theta you get this funny expression there can we evaluate it that is equal to 1 okay that is because of the adiabatic flame temperature in the case of an adiabatic flame temperature this is the heat that is released in the chemical reaction and all the heat that is released in the chemical reaction goes to increasing the sensible enthalpy of the mixture that is what an adiabatic reaction uh, uh, flame is all about okay. So CPTF minus T0 is a sensible enthalpy rise of the mixture with it, which is primarily coming from Q and therefore this is also equal to 1 lo and behold the boundary conditions are also identical wow we made such a big fuss about you know 4 5 n plus 6 reactions in the combustion problem and then we we, we we now belabor a lot to get the schwab zeldovich formulation going and we still had to start get stuck with n plus 1 reactions n of which were fortunately uh, homogeneous and all those kinds of things and finally uh, we we are, we are able to actually get to uh, two reactions that we, we just pick out of them and then we find that both of them are identical and the boundary conditions are also identical therefore it is sufficient for us to solve only one equation great progress right. So therefore considering one equation is sufficient. If you were to still persist and say well <laughs> theta should be equal to a, a, a alpha plus b and you can substitute the boundary conditions for alpha uh, and then plug in values of uh, theta and alpha um, there you will find that a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0 all right so then you will find you will be able to show that theta is equal to alpha so that is mathematically showing things okay. So what we want to do now is get confronted by that one and only equation let us say we, we take the one that is written first right and then we want to deal with this and we want to see how to solve this right for the first time in our lives as combustion students we are going to solve something <laughs> so far we have been only posing problems <laughs> okay oh my god how do we solve this what is the problem that is a second order ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients as a matter of fact okay rho d is a constant rho u is a constant okay and then you have a uh, it is it is an inhomogeneous in equation all right okay what is the inhomogeneity all about <laughs> you have the w that is the chemical reaction rate and you, you have the theta there through through the temperature sitting on top of an exponent with a negative sign right sitting in the denominator on top of an exponent with a negative sign okay. <laughs> so that is the ugly looking expression that has been camouflaged by a simple w there you see and that has been the one that we have been really feeling jittery about all these years and there we are we have to solve. So how do you do this chicken out of the problem say well can I look at the flame where you do not have a w <laughs> yeah sure of course so you, so you get into the flame you know you, you now with a lot of trepidation you get into the flame and then still no w oh sure fine this looks great so I go get in there and then no w at all for quite some time so I can solve that. Can I? So, what we would do is we now begin to notice the way we were talking about things earlier that you have a flame with a preheat zone with hardly any W, 
where I could actually go ahead and jolly well solve this and then I have to look at this, this region where I have to confront the W and then point out that you pretty much have nearly the same enthalpy for the incoming species and the outgoing species so you do not really have a convective enthalpy flux to worry about and therefore I am going to get rid of this right and I am going to look at a reactive diffusive balance and then try to integrate that right. Why I mean we still have to take this W into account ultimately so what is the big deal the answer is what is it that we are actually looking for out of this equation can we now find out what exactly our problem is what is what is that one single quantity that we are trying to solve for do we know what the problem is in our lives <laughs> we do not know the flame speed okay. So although this is like a very innocent looking constant that is being pulled out we do not know what the U is right. So what this actually allows us to do is we can say while I am actually in the convective diffusive balance I keep the U which is what I do not know right and then it turns out to be like an eigenvalue problem. So an eigenvalue problem is where you have one of the coefficients that is an unknown and you supply the boundary conditions and then you turn, turn out that you, you, you the, the, the boundary conditions are not sufficient enough for you to actually evaluate the eigenvalue right. So in this case what you do is you retain this in one of the uh, regions and you get rid of it in the other region where you have to confront the W. So you are kind of breaking your problem into two parts divide and rule right this was my problem this was my unknown keep the unknown get rid of the problem in one and keep the uh, problematic thing and get rid of the unknown in the other I should be able to handle this but what is the catch I solve for the this is going to have this is going to still need two boundary conditions because it is second order right and my zone is only from here to here right. And strictly speaking I do not know exactly where to draw this line all right it is sort of like as I keep on entering into this region and then the chemical reactions are happening somewhere I suddenly feel too too hot and then say I think I have got into the reaction zone <laughs> so it is a feel right I do not know exactly where it is and I need a boundary condition there while I do not even know where the boundary is. <laughs> okay and look at this this part right if I now want to keep this and that I still am not throwing out the leading order term which means I need to have it is still second order equation and I need two boundary conditions and the boundaries are this fuzzy boundary somewhere here and the far downstream boundary okay. But all we have stated so far is I knew what the boundary condition is here I knew what the boundary condition is there. So what do we have to do here we have to now come up with two boundary conditions because it is second order which are shared by these two so that is what is called as interface conditions. So that is an interface between two zones and we have to supply two conditions that are shared by these two okay and whenever we are looking for two conditions it is because it is second order and if it is second order then we are looking for two conditions one in the value and the other one in the first derivative and, and in fluid mechanics the first derivative mostly has some significance in the sense the first derivative is going to actually deal with the heat flux the, the value itself is going, to va is going to be at the temperature okay. So we will go through these, these steps uh, rather quickly in, in mathematical way. So region 1 is our convective diffusive balance right convective diffusive zone which implies that W is approximately equal to 0 
and then we can write d squared we can go back to t do not worry about theta anymore that was just to show that theta and alpha are the same you can go back to an equation that is over there. So d squared t over dx squared minus rho u cp over k dt over dx is approximately equal to 0. Now when you say this is approximately equal to 0 this equation is what is called as the 0th order equation. So what we are actually doing is a part of a larger approach called asymptotic matching okay or what is called as matched asymptotic expansions. Strictly speaking what we should say is the temperature profile can be expressed as an asymptotic expansion all right and we now try to uh, take the what is called as a 0th order where whatever is actually a small quantity in the equation is set identically equal to 0 it is not exactly 0 right you do have the temperature rise and you strictly speaking have a reaction rate that is beginning to increase fortunately for us if the E is large it is going to get confined to a smaller region okay so that is what we are really counting on uh, but it is it is approximate. So to, to leading order to 0th order we now set it identically equal to 0 get rid of it from the equation in the first order we have to refine the equation with keeping that small value you see we will not do that <laughs> fortunately okay we, we, we will not do that we will just do only the 0th order uh, matching so let us let us call this equation 1 and the boundary conditions here as we talked about we want to retain the cold boundary uh, conditions which is <coughs> T equals uh, T naught and uh, X equals 0 minus so we are now locating our X equal to 0 at the edge of the preheat zone uh, rea reaction zone match and uh, we want to call this x equal to 0 minus t equals ti many times we are tempted to think that i stands for ignition temperature okay and then we are always looking for what is called as an ignition temperature that is like a popular notion and, and it is a popular um, engineering notion to think about like an ignition temperature mathematically speaking we have to confront a cold boundary difficulty that you have reactions happening even there okay it is just an it is just simply not significant enough as far as here Ti is unknown actually it is not like we are going to plug in a value there that is above or that is somewhere in between the room temperature and flame temperature that is not what you are going to do it is an unknown it is it is a it is a temperature that is going to be shared as the upstream boundary condition for the um, reaction zone all right and, and it is it is an unknown so that is that's, that's region 1 for you region 2 is uh, reactive diffusive zone here what we then say for the 0th order reaction is d squared t over dx squared plus wq over k is approximately equal to 0 that means this is the diffusive part this is the reactive part the balance is essentially that you hardly have any convective uh, flux that is going on uh, that is changing so you do not have a essentially what that really means is you do not have a dt by dx significantly okay uh, that is a very small quantity. So the boundary condition here we can easily write the hot boundary condition which is x equal to infinity we can say T equals Tf that is like what we had started with uh, but then the interface condition is x equals 0 plus we have to write the same T equals Ti which is an unknown right. Now if you are really bit, a little bit more careful you would probably want to write this equation for the region 1 as 
d square t1 over dx square minus rho u cp over k d, d t1 over dx and then write these temp, these as t1 equal to t0 and t1 equal to ti you can say uh, here you can plug in a t2 and then t2 t2 and then finally say the interface t1 should be equal to t2 and so on okay but would we understand that uh, uh, ultimately it is going to be a single temperature profile that we are interested in and then we said that we wanted to have one more boundary condition at the interface that needs to be shared and since it is a second order uh, equation we can go up to the first order the first derivative is signifying heat flux and therefore what this really means is matching uh, heat flux heat flux at the interface between the two regions two regions we get dt over dx x equal to 0 minus should be equal to dt over dx x equals 0 plus well strictly speaking we should say k dt by dx but since it is the same species and as the as you now go to 0 from both sides it is essentially the same location the k's are the same so we do not have to worry about it but these gradients are coming out of two different solutions and we are actually trying to force this this is going to say that we are going to force these two solutions to have the same gradient at this point what that really means for you is keep in mind what we were talking about for the length scales characteristic length scales for thermal uh, uh, balance in the in the preheat zone versus the species uh, mass uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the in this zone when we were looking at non unity Lewis number the other day we pointed out that if you were to just bother about the Schwab Zeldovich only here and then take a uh, equation that looks like this with a 0 on the right hand side you can actually solve this but you, what you will find is you, you will get a solution that kind of goes Go, go, goes like this and then goes exponentially there for x greater than 0 which is not the domain of validity it is outside the domain of validity of this equation if you were to extend the solution that you are going to get from there for your t1 of x you are going to get a, a solution that goes exponentially right that is what a uh, second order equa second order homogeneous equation is going to look like you try to solve this you will get exponents right so you will have this on the other hand what we are talking about in this equation this is also something that you can solve what you will find is this is going to actually give rise to something like that and what we are saying is at this place we want to have the temperatures as well as the slopes match and that is where we want to position our x equal to 0 somewhere there right so this is typically how we want to construct the the composite temperature profile in a composite manner by having this asymptotic matching what you are doing here is a zero order matching strictly speaking because we are identically setting whatever is a small quantity in the equation to zero and solving for it so <coughs> this is the problem and out of this we are trying to get the velocity u we will to the first region and then uh, hold on till next week for the second region with bated breath I hope right <coughs> we cannot uh, wait to get there so uh, of course we, we, we say that uh, this equation is 2 and we what we want to do is uh, integrating 1 once right we say dt over dx equals rho u divided by k cp t plus a constant and we have to uh, supply uh, 
a constant of uh, the, a boundary condition to satisfy uh, to, to evaluate this constant of integration one way of doing this is to actually integrate it twice and then you now deal with two constants and then apply the boundary conditions right but I am not going to do that what I am going to look for is I am actually interested in dt over dx at 0, 0 minus okay so I am not really interested in going ahead with integrating this twice to look at actually the temperature profile this is a point where the analysis sort of cheats you okay so until now we have been talking about these profiles matching and all those things we are actually going to, we, are, we are going to think that we will uh, we will get this matching and get this composite profile but typically at this stage the analysis does not abandons its care about the temperature profile it now starts bothering about the velocity which is the eigenvalue right that is what we are really looking for. So we do not really want to care about getting this to, and I am stating this explicitly because textbooks do not state this explicitly and then when you go back to laminar flame analysis to actually look for the temperature profile you will not find it there <laughs> okay and then they but they are like uh, let us just go to the go through go through this and then get the velocity put a box around then we got laminar flame speed let us talk about the laminar flame speed and just keep going on okay. So you do not really get uh, unless you go, go dig up literature further you cannot get this temperature profile. So that is what that is a kind of attitude that you are going to get so since that means we now have to actually evaluate what the dt by dx is uh, far upstream so we since we are saying that at far upstream in this region 1 t equals t naught at x equals minus infinity then t equals t naught for quite some distance there therefore the dt by dx is going to, is going to be equal to 0 x equal to minus infinity uh, t equals t naught uh, dt by dx equal to 0 this is asymptotically approaching that is the reason why we are able to actually reduce this otherwise we cannot okay. Uh, so that means dt by dx uh, equal to rho u divided by k um, cp t minus t naught right now if you think about it this is the first thing that we wrote in the phenomenological balance we said that rho u cp is essentially your rho u cp t minus t naught is actually the enthalpy rise that is happening and that is because of the heat conduction k dt by dx and we approximated it as k t minus uh, tf minus t naught divided by delta that is what we did earlier okay. So whatever we could actually write by just looking at things if you think about it takes about an hour for you to get if you <laughs> go through the mathematics all right <laughs> and there we are so so that is what we got now therefore if you want to now apply this to the other boundary uh, we now say at x equals 0 minus this is equal to rho u cp divided by k ti minus t naught here we are imposing the next boundary condition and then what you are going to say here and or maybe maybe this is a good point to stop okay so uh, we, we will just say this we keep in mind we do not know what ti is that is an additional problem that we have to worry about and uh, we will see how to handle this uh, next class.